my worst enemy The flesh that's covering me Brings me down to my knees Welcome to Sermons in the Park a ministry exploring biblical truth from the Word of God, focusing on the truths that help us in our daily walk with Christ in every aspect of our lives. Now, here is your Reverend, Jamie McCaskill. Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to an all-new Sermons in the Park. As always, I am your Reverend Jamie McCaskill. I want to take this time like I do each and every week to say thank you for joining me here. It's always a beautiful pleasure to be here with you all. Um... Yesterday, I witnessed my son graduating high school. It was one of those pivotal moments in, in, a, in a parent's life, right? And I was so happy and to get to watch him walk. But uh, I want to say congratulations to all of the seniors who walked this year. I um, hope you understand, you know, you, you have all these happy thoughts of the past, right? But you also have, you know, down moments, but I hope you look at all of that as an experience that led you into becoming who you are today, you know. Um, and, and you know, life isn't over, right? You, now you have all these things to look forward to, you know, getting your first job, going off to college, um, meeting the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with. You know, and, and having children, all these things, all this is is in your in your future. You know, uh, you're gonna have you had if you had friends in high school. Some you may go on to have a long friendship with. Some you might go on to forget. You know, some who might forget you. <laughs> you know, it's 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 all part of life, and life goes on. It, it, it's really scary. I remember being really scared looking f at the future and not, it, it, at first I was happy, like school's over. And then uh, it was just the thoughts of what do I do now, right? Go off to trade school, go to college, go, you know, do I, or do I just get a job? You know, for me, I went to trade school and then I, I, I joined the police department. I joined the jet. I went to work for the city jail and, and, was looking forward to a job as a police officer, and, and then I wound up leaving town. I moved away from my hometown of Jonesville, Louisiana, and I went off in, to, to Shreveport. There's a long life ahead of you. The the Your limitations are just the limit of your imagination. You have so much you can go do now. The world is open to you. So... Keep your past in the past and look forward to the future because it's going to be bright. It's bright and wonderful. And with God as your guide, nothing can stop you. Now, before we get started into the sermon today, let's bow our heads and thank our Heavenly Father for all the great and wonderful gifts he's given us. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you again for just being you, for you know, giving us a life to look forward to. A beautiful future for all of us. We pr I pray, Father, that those seniors who graduated, that they keep their eye on you. They don't let the, this old world beat them down. That they learn from their past mistakes and they move on to their future. That they keep their, you know, that they have their memories and that their memories shape and guide them into a beautiful and bright future. Because if it wasn't for you, Father, none of us would be here. You give us everything. And we thank you in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. So the past couple of weeks we've done, well, for a while now, I've been doing these two parts, you know, two sermons a, a day. You know, one of them is like a message and the other one is a subject, such as for the past two weeks I've been doing, uh, so I did the Sabbath Day Adventists where I talked about them. And while I, was while I was talking about them, my mind kept going back to the other ones that I talk about, especially 
you know, these other cult-like religions, such as the Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm saying the Jehovah's Witnesses, even though they're not the only one that does this, but a lot of these other religions, they make a claim that they're that they uh, that you have to use this this special or or sacred name, as they'll say, for God. The Jehovah's Witnesses are the first ones that will come to mind on this, and because they believe that your prayers will not be answered if you're not using this so-called sacred name of God, with the Jehovah's Witnesses, of course, uh, that is Jehovah. Even though something like that just completely ignores the fact that the J, the letter J for Jehovah is not even part of the Hebrew language. They don't have a J. Like if you were going to look up Jesus's proper Hebrew name, it's Yeshua. Yeah, because the J is not there. Yeah. So it's Yeho, it would be Yehovah, right? Uh, why? And even then, the, the 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 vowels aren't even there. So it's Y H V H, which is Yefa. I, I want to tell you a story real quick while I'm thinking about this. Um, it was a very uncomfortable interaction that I had uh, about over 20 years ago. Um. I met a Jehovah. I met a Jehovah's Witness. I, I was working at a Dairy Queen in Shreveport, and this guy was really cool, really nice guy. When we we became we we actually were really good friends, and we would frequently talk about Jesus because at that time, I'm not sure if the movie was out yet or if it was about to come out, but The Passion of the Christ. Uh, was be either being released or ha was already released in theaters. I can't remember. That part's not important. But one day, this man who, like I said, I'd become real close friends with, he decided to ask me a very, let's say, odd question. He asked me, he said, Jamie, you say that you follow God. I'm like, yeah. What, what's the name of your God? And that caught me off guard, Right. But I just smiled. I, at the time, I, I didn't know a lot about the Jehovah's Witnesses. But I kind of just smiled and looked at him and I said, God, the one true God. And he just kind of smiled and said, no, 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 what's his name? And, of course, that confused me, right? Because, like I said, at the time, I didn't know a lot about the Jehovah's Witnesses like I do today. And I said, oh, you mean his name, I, I am, I, I am, right? And he said, no, that's not his name. What's his name? And it was at this point that, like, in our conversation where I wound up learning that this this guy, my friend, was a Jehovah's Witness. So, so yeah, there are these religions out there that teach this belief that we have to call on God by this supposed sacred name. So we're going to talk about that. Okay, so we're and again we're gonna we're gonna do like we usually do. We're gonna try to answer some questions. Okay, like questions like um, does God have a so-called special or sacred name that He demands that we always use, especially in prayer? Uh, another question we can, we're gonna try to answer is: Do we sin? if we do not pronounce it correctly or even spell it correctly? Because, yes, they do make that call, too. So while we're doing this, we're going to try to look at these. So what might surprise you is that, like it did me, this, this belief in this supposed sacred or special or sacred name for God has led to not only the Jehovah's Witnesses, okay, but a lot of different religious groups, to pop up over the years, not only in a certain name, okay, but also the way it's spelled or the way that you pronounce it. One group who, who believe, you'll have this one group who believes that we should call God Yahweh. And then you'll have another group who will say, no, 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 it's Yava, right? But there are, then those who say, no, it's Yahweh or Yehovah, Jehovah, and the list just goes on and on and on. And I'm sure that you've noticed sometimes, you know, I'm sure you noticed the way that something special about, or I should say, something that these names have in common. They all revolve around that 
tetragamation. That's the tetragamation is that four letter word, the the consonants that you'll find in the Bible, Y H W H or Y H V H. Those are the that's what the Hebrews would refer God, you know, refer to as God. That's how they would refer to God, right? Now, if you go online and you find groups or, or websites that talk about this, what you'll usually find is the usual arguments that people use. Um, it's the same people who, who will go against, say, Christmas or Easter or even, yes, church on Sundays. These arguments that, oh, it's pagan to celebrate Christmas. Oh, it's pagan to celebrate Easter. Oh, it's pagan to have church on Sundays. They'll say that calling our creator just God is not showing God any reverence. Because guess what? Well, the pagans called their deities God, and we should not apply that to our creator. But when you use that argument, you're ignoring one essential fact. One of the words that the Hebrews used when they were talking about God or the creator, they would call him Elohim. You can find that name used in many, many places in the Bible. And I'm only going to show you one of them here. Um, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And there, the Bible, if you were to pull out your old King James, you'll read this. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, in the old King James, we see God there. Right, but if you were to look at the Hebrew version of the of the Old Testament, or you, what you're going to find is the word Elohim. Interesting, isn't it? Because the Bible also refers the same book, the King James, also refers to Elohim when it's talking about the false gods that were created. All you have to do. Is pull out a Strong's Concordance. What you'll find is that in the Old Testament, that word Elohim is used at least, and I'm saying at least 240 times, to refer to false gods. They'll also use that variant L. So just think about this: if you are the one, if you're going to sit there and you're going to reject the English word God for our Creator then why were the Hebrews using Elohim or El or any other variant in the, that we see in the Old Testament? Oh, and I almost forgot to mention that root word, El. That was also used for the pagans when they spoke about their deities around the same time that Moses was writing the first five books of the Bible. Doesn't that prove that our Heavenly Father does not prohibit the use of words from other languages when we talk about him? Right? Did you know that that word Elohim is literally the plural form of the word El? It's used 2,600 times in the Hebrew Bible. Well, we call it the Old Testament. The very first time is in the very first verse of the Bible. I'm talking about Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, which says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. That word translated to God there is, like I said earlier, Elohim. And like I said, that word is the plural form of El, which is also used to, re- to reference the false gods that were worshipped by the neighbors of Israel. All you have to do is look at archaeology to see that that's true. While digging in the Canaanite city of Ugarat, they found discoveries that show that El was the name of the the, the head deity of that city. So let's go and let's do something else. 
just to prove my to prove the point here. Let's look at Abraham. You know that the Bible calls Abraham the father of the faithful over in Galatians chapter 3 verse 7 which says know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. That means that he's the father of the covenant because because of the faith of Abraham he was called righteous. That's right. Look at Romans chapter 4, verse 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So I want you to think about that for a moment. Abraham is considered a friend of God. That's what we see in James chapter 2 verse 23 and it says and the scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God so again I want you to keep that in mind I want you to think on it really hard would Abraham not be one of the few people in the Bible who would know without the shadow of a doubt that there was this unique or, or sacred or special name for the Creator, then if you believe in this sacred name, I want you to explain something to me. Why would God give Moses a completely different name than he gave to Abraham for him to call him? I'm serious. Look at Exodus chapter 6, verse 23. It says, And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. Now that word right there, Lord, is translated from the Hebrew word, which you like to pronounce Jehovah. And it says, And I appeared unto him Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. That word right there is the Hebrew word El Shaddai. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. I want you to think on that because God appeared to Abraham and his descendants as El Shaddai. But they didn't know him as Jehovah like Moses did. Interesting, isn't it? So did God have two references for himself? But if one or the other is right, then the other one has to be wrong. How can they both be saved then? I mean... If we have to use a supposed special or sacred name, then only one of those two men could have been saved. Right? Look at Matthew chapter 8, verse 11. What do you see there? And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. And then over in Matthew chapter 17, verse 3, what do we see there? And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. I think it's quite obvious what the answer is here. God allows us to refer to him using a variety of different references. But I think the strongest piece of evidence that I could give you to show that God does not have some supposed sacred name or title that he prefers for us to call him by is can be found in the Greek language. That's what the New Testament was written in. We're going to look at the word curios real quick because that's over in the Strong's Concordance, you look, uh, G2962. What you're going to see there is that that word curios is the word that you and I translate to Lord. That word is used 665 times. The word that we give, or I should say that we get the word God from, is used 1,345 times. And what I found to be the most interesting part of this was that in several places in the Old Testament, if you were to look at it, you'll see the Greek word kurios for Lord was used in the place of Yahweh. Y-H-V-H. That the, 
that's the one that the Hebrews used. Now, one example can be found in Matthew chapter 3. Now, I'm pointing to this one because I know that's not Old Testament, but it's, this is actually quoting from the Old Testament. Matthew, in Matthew chapter 3, we see a quote from Isaiah actually used. Matthew chapter 3, verse 3. It says, For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. That word Lord there was translated from curios. When you look at the verses they're quoting from, which this time is Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3, the word used there is Yahweh, Y-H-V-H, according to the Strong's. So that tells us that the Apostle Paul also substituted Yahweh when he quoted from the Old Testament verses. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 31, which says that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. And then in Romans chapter 4, Verse 8, he does the same thing. Let me get over there real quick. Romans chapter 4, verse 8. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. And then again, over in Romans chapter 9, verse 23. You know how much I love Romans. <laughs> Romans chapter 9, verse 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which we had afore prepared unto glory. And, and there are other places as well. So look at what happened when Jesus made his arrival in Jerusalem. Do you remember that scene? All oh, the movies love to show it, right? That's where Jesus is riding in on the donkey into Jerusalem. What did the people say? Did they use the word, the supposed sacred name? Did they call, oh, Yahweh, oh, Yahweh, or anything like that? No. We read them being quoted. What they're quoting there is Psalm chapter 118, verse 26. But we're going to be reading Matthew chapter 21, verse 9, where Jesus is writing in. It says, And the multitudes that went before him, this is Matthew chapter 21, verse 9, And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. That word, again, that they're translating to Lord here is what? Curios. And look at Jesus himself. Look at Jesus. When, Jesus, when, we, when we see Jesus and he's quoting the Psalms, when he's talking about himself, right? He's quoting the Psalms. We never see him say Yahweh or Yahweh. He doesn't even insert the vowels there to go, oh, Yahweh and Jehovah. No. No. Because you know what? If he had done that, those self-righteous leaders who wanted to kill him, they would have had every right to have him executed. That's right. Look at Luke chapter 20, verses 41 to 44. And he said unto them, how say that the Christ is David's son? And David himself saith in the book of Psalms, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore calleth him Lord. How is he then his son? But do we ever, ever, See Jesus say a supposed special name. Him or his apostles. Can you, can you show me one? Like I said, if they had, people would have reviled them. Those scribes and those Pharisees who wanted them dead would have had every right to do it. Now, a while back, you might remember I did this episode on Jesus' trial where I told you that the trial was illegal. You might remember that I mentioned how they had used these false witnesses to come in and tell lies, accuse Jesus of wrongdoing. Well, look, we're going to look real quick. Mark, Mark chapter 14, we're going to look at verses 55 
to 59. It says, And the chief priests and all the council sought for witnesses against Jesus to put him to death, and found none. For many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. And there arose certain a and bear false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But neither so did their witnesses agree together. And then over in Matthew chapter 26, we're going to look at verses 59 to 61. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. I need you to realize here, if Jesus ever, ever used the name Yahweh in any form, El, Elohim, any of that, during his public ministry, those Jews, they would have... They wouldn't have needed a reason to use these false witnesses. They wouldn't have needed these lies. Because the Jews taught that for you to use that name, Yahweh or Yahweh, in public, or even like I'm doing right now, that it was a sin. This doctrine that these, for lack of a better word, cults have created that we have to use the Hebrew names when we refer to God or even Jesus. It's something that they read into the Old Testament. But when they're confronted with the New Testament, well, doesn't this contradict their position? They forget in the sight of our Heavenly Father, it's not what we say. It is, it's what we do while we're serving Him that matters look at matthew chapter 7 verse 21 not everyone that saith unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven now before i uh, end here today i want to make sure that i say something the many names that we see for god in the old testament they all do one thing. They reveal a different aspect of God's character. Study them. That way you can understand them. These silly disputes that these people come up with. Oh, you have to call Jesus Yeshua Hamashat. All these things. You have to call God Yahweh or Jehovah. They're, they're silly. They, they all come up, oh, we have to refer to him perfectly. Oh, how we pronounce his name is important. These things are all trivial when, we're, when you compare them to learning more about Jesus, about his magnificence, about his power, about his authority. Using some special name or some sacred name for God or Jesus does not affect your prayers at all. And it definitely does not affect your relationship with God. The fact you came home, the fact that you love him, the fact that you serve him, that's all that matters to God. Not you, the way you refer to him. I mean, yeah, he wants you to refer to him as your father, as God. Yes, he wants you to talk to him. What you how you know I, I refer to him as yes I refer to him as Yahweh or I refer to him as Jehovah. He doesn't care because he knows you're talking about him. You are serving him. He knows who you're talking to. And that's what matters. Think of it as your son is calling you or your daughter is calling you. How does that make you feel? That's how God feels every time you talk to him. He loves you. He cares for you. 
and the fact that you're talking to him makes him happy. It doesn't matter you call him Jehovah or Yehovah or Yahweh or Elohim. Great. You want to call him by that? Fantastic. Because guess what? He loves you. That's all that matters to him. You came home. You were out there in the world. You were wandering. You were lost. You were sinning. But you turned your life around. You apologized and you came home. And guess what? If you apologized, you turned back to him, you turned away from those sins, guess what? You're forgiven. The way you feel about it, as the Bible says, the heart is deceitful. Your feelings are lying to you. I don't feel forgiven. Well, you are. You know how I know? The Bible says that God is, uh, is happy to forgive you. He is faithful to forgive you. Because he loves you. I hope that uh, I hope that you got something out of this today. I hope that uh, you learned something. I hope that you know you're all doing fantastic and lovely. And if you need me, guys, hey, I'm here. Call, message me. I love to hear from you. Love when you comment below my my videos or or you send me an email on the sermons in the park email. I love hearing from you all. If I see you in public and you talk to me, I love talking to you. (laughs) So thank you all for joining me. I pray the Lord continues to bless and keep you all. I'll see you soon. I love you and God bless you. You have been listening to Sermons in the Park with Reverend Jamie McCaskill. Be sure to follow us on YouTube, BitChute, and Rumble. And as always, thank you for listening. There's joy for the morning. Sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can't heal.